Previously on the Zero to KSM challenge, we did our time walk-ins and looted a rumbling ruby trinket from the cache. We opened our first vault and got a tier chest piece. We took down the world boss and got a 395 ring. And then we unlocked the catalyst. We then failed our first key of the series, but we don't need to talk about that. We then timed an Alcafer's Academy 10. And we finished the week by timing a Halls of Valor 10. And now we start once again with a brand new reset, which means we have the vault to open. But first, I'm not going to make the same mistake as I did last time. This time, we're going to do the world boss first, like you should do. So we did just that. I made my way down to the world boss. I got into a group. And well, I kind of don't want to tell you what happens next because I, I can already feel the hate. Yeah, we got gear again. <laughs> what the heck? Streamer loot. So we ended up getting a pretty big cloak upgrade from 372 to 395. We started the day at 380 item level and that bumped us up to 381. Though it was time to open the vault and I was kind of worried because last week wasn't a very good week. Last week we only had time to complete two runs, which means we only have one slot in the vault. So fingers crossed, we get a juicy upgrade. It was time. I approached the vault and decided to use slappy hands as a charm of good luck. And would you believe it? We got tear gloves. We got two set. Woohoo! Yeah, I think we open the vault like that every week now. And in terms of getting our hands on the four set, I think I'm going to hold out until next week. We are missing a couple of pieces yet. We still got some 372 bits of gear. I'm not going to convert that because it's no point. I can't upgrade it. Hopefully next week. Hopefully. In terms of the key that we got for this week, again, we got a Jade 10. Last week, I chose not to do the J10, but I think this week is pretty unavoidable. Plus, we need the rating. It didn't take very long to form the group. I took the first players that signed up, and luckily for me, we ended up with multiple CRs and a bloodlust. Now, Jade was the last place my DK ventured into. I don't have a lot of confidence when it comes to pugging this place. And some of the trash, especially just before the last boss, oof, can be pretty spicy. All right, so starting the key, I just want to talk about a couple of the first mob packs, the water elementals in particular. Now, there's really only one ability we need to worry about, and that is Tainted Ripple. Basically, the elemental will start casting when it gets to the end. Everyone in sight will take a massive amount of frost damage. To avoid this, you just break line of sight. Now, usually a group with a melee or two, I'd tank it closer to the corner so that the DPS have a chance to actually get around the corner and line of sight. Though, so because we had the luxury of three ranged DPS, I decided to be a bit lazy, and uh, considering the key level, I felt I could, so I didn't bother line of sight in myself. I mean, sure, I can use stuff like AMS to negate it, but I can't negate all of them, so I guess in higher keys, I hide as well, but at a plus 10, I can take it. Though, for the most part, everyone decided not to line of sight, or maybe they just didn't know. Man, I feel sorry for the healer. On the first pack, the elemental wasn't so bad. But when you encounter the second one, you also have to deal with water speakers. Now these guys need interrupting, specifically an ability called Tidal Burst. Again, maybe at a 10 it doesn't do quite so much damage, but once you start pushing the really high keys, these are incredibly important to kick. And well, lucky for us it's only a 10, because uh, we probably would have died. First boss we go into without a CR. I know, promising, right? And yeah, things get a bit messy. I'm not going to bore you with the tactics to this boss because that's not what these videos are really about. However, I will share a weak aura with you that helps with one of the mechanics. Now, I've only just started using this aura and I didn't think about the placement of both that and quaking. And for the majority of this encounter, they were both overlapping. But if I just show you this part where it's not overlapping, you can see that the corrupted geezer, geyser, I, I don't know what it's called. It's basically the ability that goes off periodically. It deals a massive amount of damage, knocks you up in the air, and to avoid it, you just don't stand in the water. You stand on one of the platforms. You can see at the top of the screen, the red bar ticking down, and the white lines simply indicate when this ability is about to occur. This isn't usually something I struggle with anyway, but I thought I'd get the weak aura and just have it there as a reminder. I'll leave this weak aura linked down below, but please remind me if I forget. I'm old and forgetful, so it's very likely that I'll forget. Now, sadly, the healer died, which meant the DPS also died. So I decided to die myself and reset the encounter. Thankfully, we killed it on the second try. We made our way to the second boss and uh, trash went pretty smoothly. Now, the second boss, or bosses, you might say, Strife and Peril, need to be switched between. 
So basically direct damage to either Strife or Peril will grant them a stacking buff. I think it grants them extra damage, maybe some other stuff. Anyway, what the group needs to do and what I tried explaining and asking them at the beginning was to start with Strife on the left and switch at 7 stacks so that they don't reach 10. When one of them reaches 10 stacks, they'll become immune for 15 seconds. Some groups actually do it that way and it is considered easier to get them to 10 stacks and then switch. But I mean, in terms of efficiency, you should probably swap at 7. And like true pug fashion, they completely ignore me. But it's fine, we've come to accept this sort of thing. We down the boss, or bosses, and we move on to the third one. Would now be a good idea to tell you this week's affixes, because uh, I keep forgetting to do that. So this week's affixes are tyrannical, spiteful, quaking, and of course, thundering. Now, I wasn't sure going into this if I could actually grip the shades from spiteful. Turns out you can. Just uh... If they're targeting a melee, don't 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 grip them into melee, because grip melee, right? For the most part, I've actually been pretty smart about it. I've been gripping them away from the, the healer and the ranged, but I'm sure it'll happen one day. But this was the part of the dungeon that I feared the most, and for good reason. The first couple of packs are fine, but it's the one right before the boss that you want to worry about. Some groups use Bloodlust on this pack, other groups CC a couple of the mobs. Uh, we, we, we did neither. I mean, with just under three minutes left, I didn't think we were going to time this anyway. I quickly informed the group that I was going to start kiting them back. And well, have you ever seen the Go Guy? Go, go, I'm pulling if you don't pull. Go, 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 go. I'm waiting for the healer to get mana! Oh. Go, 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 go. Yeah, we had one of those. So I end up getting feared, I panic, misplay, and I die. Death kind of on me, but I mean, fears and... Like I said, this pack is horrible. I can only do so much, but if I expect to time these sort of keys, I should probably up my game. I don't know, maybe I'm being too hard on myself. I quickly make it back and they finish off the rest of the ads. Now, with one minute remaining, there's no chance we're timing this. I place a marker and tell everyone to stack up during the ad phase. This way we can group all the ads together and nuke them down as quick as possible. Did this happen? Of course it didn't happen. Anyway, the ads get out of control, the dot kills everyone and uh, we end up wiping. I get back to the boss and once again I tell everyone to stack on the marker for the ads. Now, my plan for this boss was to save Slappy Hands for the second lot of ads, assuming that Bloodlust would be used for the first lot. On the first wipe, Bloodlust wasn't even used. So I figured Bloodlust on the first lot of ads would get them down nice and fast and then Slappy Hands for the second one to bring them together. That way it should make the encounter a lot smoother. Thankfully, Bloodlust was used, but as the ads were all over the place because no one bothered to stack up, I decided to use Slappy Hands on the first lot. This meant that we killed the ads a lot quicker and used the rest of the Bloodlust window to deal damage to the boss. Eventually, we did manage to kill the boss. I got a huge chunk of rating. Unfortunately, that downed our key to a Court of Stars 9. And once again, we didn't get any loot. From here, I decided to sign up to some keys that I don't have any rating for this week. One of them being Algafer's Academy. I try my luck to a 14, and to my surprise, I got invited. Now, up to the first boss, I actually handled it very well. I took my time being a 14 and whatnot. I pulled slowly instead of pulling everything together, and we activated the first boss. I place a marker on myself and tell everyone to stand on me and move clockwise when the ads are spawning. And the boss was going really, really well. Nah, it was absolutely horrible. It felt like they were purposely standing round the boss in different locations all moving in different directions when the ads were spawning. It was complete chaos. I tried communicating with the group. I was typing in party chat giving instructions, but wipe after wipe and I was just being completely ignored. Along with that, we had the thunder in a fix that wasn't being cleared and I got stunned a couple of times. That wasn't great either. Obviously my fault as well. I should move to clear myself. I shouldn't rely on everyone else. But yeah, after multiple wipes and 18 deaths and completely being ignored, I decide, nah, I'm out. And then I thought to myself, hmm, that was fun. Let's go back there again. But this time, I'll clear it on a 10. Again, I wanted the rating from Algafer's Academy, so looking back on it now, I should have done an 11. That way I can get some more primal focus for crafted gear. So yeah, I made a bit of a mistake there, but nevertheless, we go back to Algafer's Academy 10. We two chest the key. And this time we actually got some loot. We got some legs. Massive upgrade and something we can definitely convert later into tier. This brings our total item level all the way up to 384 and our mythic rating score up to 1,149. 
Now, in terms of score, there were a few places I wanted to go to just to bump it up and get them above the 10 level. But it was getting late, so I decided to call it a day and return in the morning. And that I did. I woke the next day and I was ready to rock. There were three places I needed to go. It all started with Halls of Valor. Hmm, deja vu. We overtimed it by nearly 15 minutes. We had 37 deaths. Nevertheless, we completed the run. And we actually got 56 score. We looted the chest and it gave us a ring. I wasn't actually sure if this was an upgrade and uh, perhaps I should have traded it to someone else. But this was a ring that I could potentially upgrade, so I decided to keep it. Perhaps it was finally time to replace the first bit of gear that the DK actually got. And that was the rep ring from the Cobalt Assembly. It has a nice effect, but in terms of stats, the, uh, the new ring was probably a big upgrade. That brought our score up to 1,205 and our item level up to 385. The next place I decided to go was Knockard Offensive because our previous run was only a plus 5. I applied for multiple 11s and 12s, sadly I couldn't get into any and I was running out of patience so I signed up to a couple of 10s and I got into one pretty fast. Now we've covered Knockard Offensive a bunch of times so I'm not going to go over it too much. The only thing I'll talk about is the ad phase on the last boss and something I should have done. So there are 4 ads, 2 on each side. They all need gathering together, they all need interrupting. Now, basically what I do is stand on one side, use slappy hands and run to the other side to bring them all together. So what I should do, and I'll definitely do going forward, is standing right in the middle where the boss is, casting slappy hands and gripping the two mobs furthest away on both sides. This makes for grouping of the ads a lot faster and definitely more efficient. It was actually the monk in the group that whispered me after. He plays a blood DK and he had a few tips for me. I say few, I'm old and forgetful. He told me so many things about the blood DK. He went over the opener, a few of the abilities, some talents. Really helpful, really nice guy. Much appreciated. So uh, massive shout out to Beer Monk of Cadgar. I very much appreciate the tips. I've got the entire conversation recorded so I can go back and have a look at what they said because uh, honestly, I can't remember most of it. The next place on the list was Azure Vaults. If you remember previously, I only had a 9 and I wanted to bump that up a little. Eventually, I got into an 11. As we've been here a bunch of times, I'm not going to go over it again. Sadly, we overtimed it. We did get 21 rating. No loot, but because it was an 11, we did get a primal focus. And at the end of the week, we leave with 1,285 score and 385 item level. And at this point, we've completed a key at at least a plus 10 level, apart from Ruby Life Balls. I kind of left that until last because uh, it's my, my least favorite, but just didn't have the time. Sadly, my groups over the last couple of resets haven't really worked so well. But I mean, I haven't been pushing my own key, so maybe that's the reason. Now, I would say going into the next reset, that's going to change, but I have a big plan. Next week's going to be huge because next week I'm going to up my game. Firstly, we're going to look to acquire our four set, and then I'm going to look to completing every keystone at a plus 13 rating. Now, there are two reasons I'm doing this. Firstly, they need to be above plus 11 so I can farm primal focus. I can use the primal focus to then get something crafted. And I think in terms of crafted gear, I definitely want the unstable frost fire belt. Not only is it absolutely amazing for me, but my belt's still blue. So yeah, that would be pretty huge. The other reason is obviously for rating. And as you can see, my fortified week is uh, it's looking pretty bare. The only keys we seem to have completed on a fortified have been Halls of Valor and Algafer's Academy. But why 13? Why not 11? I mean, if I just need the primal focus, surely 11's easier, right? Well, there's been a bunch of comments that basically said you can achieve KSM just by timing plus 13s. Now, I'm not going to bother doing the math, nor am I great with that sort of thing, but I'm all about the for science in, so I'm going to put that to the test. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, I can smash up 13s on both Fortified and Tyrannical. And let's see if we can achieve KSM. Now, that's obviously very time dependent. I might not actually have time to complete it all, but that's the goal. If you did enjoy this video, a like would be much appreciated. Consider subscribing to the channel to see where this journey takes us. And if you want to watch me live or join me for some keystones, you can catch me live over on Twitch every Saturday. A link to that and all of my other socials can be found below. But that's me done. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.